I'm probably not the only one who's noticed at this point that ASUS ROG makes so many different gaming PC components that you could pretty much build an entire system with nothing but ROG stuff. So when ASUS reached out to sponsor a video for Intel's Gamer Days, which is gonna have giveaways, deals on components, desktops, and laptops starting August 30th, we figured, why don't we try to finally do it? So in front of me is all the components of what Anthony and I hope is going to be the ultimatest ROG gaming system that we have ever built. And of course, pretty much everything in front of us has that one important feature that everyone, everyone needs. RGB. RGB. So as always, our build starts with safety first, rolling out the Gamers Nexus mod mat so we can get started on our machine. So at the core oh, is of course gonna be our ROG Maximus 11 code motherboard. So this is the one that we've been using on our Intel test bench basically ever since Intel launched the 9900K, I guess? Yeah, ever since Z390. It's honestly been a solid board. I haven't had any complaints at all. And this has been through plenty of both CPU and GPU testing. Not this one in particular, this one, this one's new. But, but this model of motherboard, that's, that's the main point. Right. All right, let's pull out all these. It's okay, it's just plastic. So to install on our board, we've gone with the Core i9-9900K. So do you want to walk us through why we chose this particular model? Because it gives us that extra bit of flexibility with Intel QuickSync. So say you're a content creator, it actually integrates pretty well with the Adobe Suite right now. Um, that is a point in Intel's favor as far as CPUs go. Also, it is still a little bit faster for gaming. It's not, you know, the major leap that it used to be, but uh, that plus a relatively mature platform, I think gives us a pretty solid platform to build from. So next up, we've got our memory, and we're actually doing a pretty craptastic job of using ROG components here, aren't we? Because this well, is only, we're only one for three so far. They don't actually make ROG memory yet, but this memory is Aurasync compatible, which is very important since it is RGB memory. So this is G-Skill's Trident Z RGB 3200 C14 kit. It's Intel XMP ready, and these are 16 gig DIMMs, which is gonna give us a total of 64 gigs of RGB goodness in our finished system. Delicious overkill. That is so far over the top that it's not even funny. I think we even have a video planned in the next little bit, sort of demonstrating that this much memory is completely unnecessary for gaming. Wow, we're making excellent progress here. So do you want to get the case fired up while I try to figure out this cooler? I've never actually... Uh, this is the part where we can parallelize things a little bit. This has been kind of a single-threaded task up until now. Yeah. Hey, nerd humor. It's funny because hyper-threading and... Actually, there is something I need to do while you're working on that. Uh, get these NVMe drives installed. So uh, once again, <coughs> Not actually an ROG component. So we got a couple of 970 Pro one terabyte drives. We're gonna be running these in RAID 0 for that maximum performance. So this is interesting. With just one screw, you can actually install both of these SSDs. Oh yeah, that's a neat feature. In fact, it appears as though you don't actually need it at all. You can just chuck this thing on top of it and it'll just hold it into place. I don't really wanna do that though, so I'm gonna see if I can find that mounting screw in the box. Oh, wow. I actually have not seen Asus's ROG chassis before. Yes, it has what they call super comfortable handles, and they're actually not bad. Uh, it's upside down. Yeah, I was gonna say, they're, they, they're okay. I wouldn't call them super comfortable. I think the handle is on the other end. Okay, that's something you might justify calling super comfortable. <laughs> Made of fabric instead of uh, sharp metal. I was wondering what that was. Let's see, they got these little buttons here. 
Actually, I, I vastly prefer the latch system for these kinds of things because I'm always super terrified of tempered glass shattering when screwing in, like a screw into it. Yeah, everything in here actually feels pretty good. So this is Asus's hilarious cooler that not only has RGB built in, but it also has a display because that is what everyone needs. It's funny, it's not even the only component in here that has a display. Oh, that's right. Doesn't their power supply have an OLED display on the side? Yeah, and I think the motherboard might also. Okay, check this thing out. So you've got your copper base at the bottom, and then you've got your standard Asetek mounting ring system. You've got your pump up here. But then Asus has gone and built like a, like a multi-level parking structure on top of it. So you've got a cooling fan down here, and then you've got this PCB up here that, there you go, handles both the RGB lighting and the built-in display. Like most cases usually have their drive bays in behind the motherboard tray here, and yet in this case, you have all the drive trays arranged in such a way that you can have all the cables running parallel with the rest of the cables in the system. So it's a lot cleaner back here. What, okay. This is the ROG Aura terminal. Uh, it's, at a, it's an RGB hub. But what has got me stammering right now is that it comes with a wall plug. What? Please tell me it can be powered internally. Okay, so <laughs> the, the wall plug is for external case lighting. And the, uh, the four pin, key. yeah, well, no, no, no. It's actually got a four pin mic, uh, Molex to DC adapter. Perfect. So. So while Anthony's working his way through the RGB stuff, I'm trying to figure out how to hold all three of these fans in place while I position the radiator under them and get my hand out so I can mount the rat up in the top. Now I could ask Anthony for help, but he's really busy working on important things while I'm just, you know, doing cooling stuff. You don't need cooling if you have RGB. Not if you've got aesthetic. Who do I sound like? Looks and form factor is all that matters. Don't need cooling. Steve Jobs. No, he cared. Did he? Steve Wozniak cared. At times. Okay, I guess. He did want, He did make sure that his computers at least worked. Were those the fans that came with it? Yeah, it comes with industrial PPC fans. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. So Asus is the one company that's just like, you know what? Noctua makes the best fans. Why are we, why are we not just using them in our AIO? I was getting ready to put like sticky pads on this, but it's actually exactly the right size for a drive bay. Oh, it's two and a half inch. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It actually has the, it has the holes too. Oh, that's cool. Those of you who have watched any of our build guides before probably noticed that I ran all of these power leads for the fans towards the back of the case so that when we connect them, they're all at the back where we won't notice them. Now we've got the world's longest USB 2 cable. This is coming off the CPU cooler. <laughs> that gives me a lot of options for routing. Oh, that's, that's potentially a problem. How many USB 2 headers do we have? Two. Oh, good. That is not a problem then. Oh, uh, it's sort of a problem. Uh, okay. We'll figure that out later though. Okay, this was one oversight. Um, there's no convenient spot to route the front panel audio and front USB here. So oh. you just have to go in from over here. Yeah, that was my favorite spot. And... You can take that shroud out. So now that I've got my cable under the shroud, I can go ahead and bring this up and plug into my front panel USB 2 connector there. These have to be the thickest wires that I have ever seen on an AIO CPU cooler. How the F much current are they planning to draw through this thing? All of it. Ah, you bastard. Get on there. I don't think I have ever seen a USB plug that has that block on it. Like all the, all the housings have that cutout for the block but I've never seen anyone actually use it. Yeah, come to think of it. So where do we want these RGB strips? Um, everywhere? Oh yeah, bud. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. For sure there, bud. Okay, so here's the USB problem. We've got our front USB 3.1, which is here. We've got our front USB 3.0, which is here. And we have two front USB 2.0s, which are here. The problem is that this case, in Asus's attempt to go as fully featured as possible, 
has four USB 3.0s and that 3.1 powered type C there. So they include an adapter so you can use a 2.0 plug off the motherboard uh, for these 3.0 ports, but we don't have any left because of all of our RGB stuff. Now for extra credit, what we could do is we could take these two connectors and combine them to fit onto a single header. Should we do that? Is it worth the extra credit? We have to go all the way. I'll go get a push pin. So these are really simple to work with. All you gotta do is pop up this little plastic tab here at the back of the pin, and then swoop, pull the pin out. I wish the ATX connector was this easy to work with. So now what we do is check this out. So in the pin block here from the RGB controller, so we're taking the ones from the cooler and putting them in there. You can see there's empty ones because no one bothers to, well actually some do, but very few people bother to put just the four wires in like a single width block. So all we gotta do is just put them in in the same order. Neat, huh? So now those two devices only take up a single USB 2 header. Ow! Ah, damn. That hurt. What? Don't you hate it when you drive a pin under your fingernail? Oh, e mm-hmm, yep. Oh, crap. What? Everything I just did was totally unnecessary. Uh, there's a right angle USB 3.0 port here. So there was enough for the front panel stuff and for those both to be there. Well, now we have one more. I'm bleeding. Holy oh. hell. It stabbed me right under there, see that? I don't know where the RGB headers are supposed to be. Okay, so here is your RGB synchronization header. Nice. Then check this out. We've got a couple of SATA power, so there's a lot of power for this case, that's kind of hilarious. And then for the two USB 3.0s, they've got one that's right angle and one that's straight to account for that ASUS's motherboards often have one straight and one right angle. Sick. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's amazing. The system works. Okay, so between the AIO cooler, this friggin' thing, our RGB controller, and whatever this last thing is, we have a total of three SATA connectors and one Molex connector before we have actually plugged in any drives or peripherals. Why do they need to make it Molex? I don't know. So this is kind of cool, actually. They've got this um, like cable management hider thingamajig here and it can actually slide depending on how wide your motherboard is. So that allows us to hide things like this USB uh, 3.1 cable behind this, uh, this little cool little shroud here. So here's our USB 3.0 connector here, which on a normal system is one of the kind of eyesores because it's so bulky, but you can't even see the cabling at all. You just see the connector going in at the back. So this one too, just goes nice and snug at the bottom, just like that. Wow, that actually really is really clean. Yeah, I like it. Power supply for Anthony, so we're throwing in our Thor 1200 watt platinum, which appears to be the entire reason that there's a window built into the bottom of the case, because this power supply has a display on it. Now, I don't always keep the most glamorous parts of a build for myself, but when I do, it's dual 2080 Ti's and SLI. Oh, yes. This is gonna be the ultimate Minecraft computer. Like that moment when you feel like your graphics card needs to have an RGB controller and a fan controller on it. So this case does have that feature that allows you to put one of your graphics cards in kind of this like show off position over here. But I will not be taking advantage of it because with hard SLI bridges being what they are, it's not possible to set up SLI with one of the graphics cards in the show off position and one of them installed behind it. You so sure? I'm just gonna pop this out, uh, yes. Are you sure? I mean, maybe someone made like a, a thing. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, never mind. <laughs> did you find that in the manual? How did you know that? Uh, I just saw it and I was like, hmm, that looks like a vertical bracket. I wonder where that goes. That's actually pretty smart. Um, I come bearing an assortment of PCI Express riser cables. And a one, and a two, and a, ooh, this has gotta go. Three, er, 
Um, E. Yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah. All right, so I'm putting in my second graphics card here. Now, I have a bit of a problem. This extension is not the right angle kind, so it's gonna be hard to get it down low enough, and it might not work anymore once we do that, so we're hoping for the best. There we go. Nice. Okay. Now, I wouldn't ship the system like this. Uh, no. But I also wouldn't ship a system with heavy GPUs like this installed in it anyway, so. All right, cool. Speaking of which, these both have uh, two eight, eight pins? Yeah. Yeah, good, okay. All right, so power me up, Scotty. That is A power. Yeah, so sorry, uh, right or left? Uh, left. left, your left. Oh, okay, that's gonna be harder. Yeah, to be clear, this probably would have been easier if we had taken the shroud off, but. We always like a challenge around here. Sure, let's go with that. I kind of feel like I'm artificially inseminating a horse. Oh wait, I can see it. I can see it through the window. That's easy. There, done. Boom. Okay, nice. Ow, I can't get my arm out. Oh. Are we there? We're almost there. Wow, these are not that easy to plug in. Wish I had done them beforehand. Like I always advise people to do in my build guides and then forget about every time I'm actually building a computer. Mm-hmm. Sweet. That is so clean. Hey, that's not bad, actually. Yeah, it's not the best I've ever done, but it's decent. It's all in one place. I need you to plug this in. What is that? That's the RGB control for the power supply. All right. Horse doctor time. <laughs> I don't see it at all. Uh, okay, let's, let's just let's look at the manual. Let's calm down. No shroud. Taking the shroud off is for the week. Oh, hold on. No, I don't think I was over far enough. Ow, okay, woo! All right, we're getting close. Laying out our peripherals. There we go. All right, can I scooch past you here? Scooch away. Okay. Oh, we need a monitor. We do. Dang it. Asus has thoughtfully provided one for us, though. This is my second favorite monitor from Asus right now. It's their 144 hertz 4K G-Sync display. I'm more of an ultra-wide guy, though, so I actually like the 200 hertz ultra-wide. Oh. Ah, my finger! Can you tilt the screen down towards the bottom of the base? Thank you. Oh, my finger was caught in there. Yeah, I'm good. I love pivot monitors. Got that RGB life! Now that is cool, being able to see a real-time readout of how much power your power supply is drawing. Yep. I was expecting more rainbow barf. Okay, wish me luck, everybody. Inner hey, glow. there it is, we're up! All right, it's prompting us for if we want to uh, enhance the system performance with the XMP settings. Oh yeah, sure. turn on multi-core enhancement, turn everything on. This is an ROG machine. What the hey, let's, uh, good luck everybody. And it's running at 60 FPS. You know what goes really nicely with this build? My stealth water bottle, lttstore.com. Subtle. Stealthy. Okay, see, wanna fire up GPU-Z? Yeah, let's see what GPU-Z has to say about this. Okay, so one card is at 8X, that's what we expect. Yeah. Uh, the other card, also 8X. Nice, okay, so, yeah, so everything's fine. We can close up the panels, and now all we gotta do is get our sync running. Is there a peel on here? There is a peel, I believe. Two peels. Two peels. It must be somebody's birthday. Ah! Oh. Dang it! I suck. Boo, boo me. Boo, hiss. Oh, this is even worse. Even worse. I suck. Wow. Okay. So this is it. The all ROG PC is done. Let's go ahead and do just a quick Cinebench R15 run, see how things are going. How's our overclock doing? Well, we didn't really overclock it. Well, no, just the XMP, all core turbo, blah, blah, blah. That mm, yeah, that's true. And we can see our wattage, 265-ish. And we're sitting at around 4.7 gigahertz, just shy of that. Yeah, that's respectable. Not bad, it's in a bench score of just, just shy of 2,000. That's actually pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, 1996, decent year. <laughs> it's a good year. All right, this is one of my favorite things to do. 
on an HDR enabled monitor. Shadow of the Tomb Raider in HDR looks so good. Can you do HDR and 120 hertz at the same time? I believe so, yes. Looks like it's completely locked at 120 at 4K. I know, right? There's not a lot of systems that can do Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K ultra details, except I turned motion blur off, and just not even begin to break a sweat. What's the power supply showing? 712 watts. All right, I was worried we weren't gonna be able to do the Quake 2 RTX demo, but it turns out it's a 25 second download. So uh, we're back in business, ladies and gentlemen. That's what a gigabit connection will do for you. Yeah. Noise global illumination. Hi, hi, baby. It is amazing how even with these low res textures and stuff, better lighting changes how the game looks in such a big way. You know what's kind of funny about this? Is like turning RTX on in a game like this is kind of like built in nostalgia glasses. <laughs> the lag time between like shooting and especially the fact that there's a projectile is really disorienting in today's world. I think it was disorienting back then too. So we're at 4K HDR with RTX on and we're running at like 60 FPS. Yeah, with DLSS on too. So if we had DLSS off, it would actually be even worse. That's cr freaking crazy. How many of these guys do you have to take out? Uh, All of them, I guess. That's like presumably. the objective of war. So there you have it, guys. Everything is running flawlessly. This is it. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. But you probably like it, because this thing looks freaking sick. I think ASUS has done an excellent job of tying together certain components in particular, like the motherboard and the case especially, and making them go together in a way that I don't know if I've actually seen before, like especially those USB headers. Really cool stuff. What else is really cool is, of course, Intel Gamer Day. So if you check out the link in the video description, you'll find deals on PC components, laptops, and desktops, as well as some really cool giveaways, which we will also have linked in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe and all that good stuff. See you next time. You're just playing games now, aren't you? I'm getting paid. <laughs>